I suspect that every one of us has a strong sense of fair play. After all, why are the rules made? So that everyone gets a fair deal, right? And gets a fair chance. The one who's played by the rules ought to be the one rewarded for playing by the rules, right? What makes it even more interesting in the verses, the scripture that we read this morning, the 20th chapter of Matthew 1 through 16, it says, for the kingdom of heaven is like this. Ooh. These are some hard sayings from Jesus. Some hard sayings from Jesus. And to compound our head scratching, we say, what does it all mean? Is it unfair, the kingdom of heaven? What about those who have worked so hard all day long and those who come last? And they get the same pay. What could it mean? Well, let's look at this a little bit deeper, shall we? Jesus was warning the Jews at that time and saying to them, now, listen up. You have lived under a covenant with me, a covenant of the law. There are coming new workers into the kingdom by a new covenant, the covenant of grace. Are those in the new covenant, the covenant of grace, any less deserving than you who have lived by the letter of the law? My covenant was with you for one way and with this other group for another way. The covenant is for all, but it is also for each. The covenant is for all, but it is also for each. Which one do you identify with? The one who's worked so hard and then someone supersedes? I suspect we all can identify to one degree or another. Because after all, each of us has our burden to bear, don't we? Where we've worked so hard and then it seemed like unfairly someone else came and did something that we so desired to do because we thought we had worked so hard for that. We can identify, can't we? Jesus said to the Jews, as he says to us, my grace, my covenant is with you people and with you individually. The response that he requires from us in either covenant is and was faith. His gift in that covenant is love. What he requires of us is faith. What he gives in return is his love. Now, some of us believe that equal treatment is what we deserve, right? Everybody needs to be treated equally. They need to be, the rules need to be the same for everyone. That's, that's the world in which we live, right? We believe that? We believe that? I suspect we don't. We want to believe that, and we get, we get ourselves all upset over that, but I think not. Let me give you an example. Let's see. There's Alice, and there's John. No John here. But there's Alice, there's John, there's Meredith, and who else is there? Joshua. 
Okay, four people. And all four people are enrolled in COHSS University. Didn't know there was one, did you? Okay, well, welcome to the first class. <laughs> Each one is enrolled. Now, Alice, Alice doesn't walk very well because she has been dealing with since birth what some termed a clubbed foot. So therefore, she doesn't walk very well. Meredith sings like a bird, beautiful, from her wheelchair, as a result of a spinal deformity when she was born. John does absolutely fabulously well in water sports. You give him a swimming pool and he can do anything. He is the first to, to win the relay. He is the freestyle. You just name it. He does it. But ask him to run and he can't do it because one leg is significantly shorter than the other. Now, there's Joshua. Joshua, the all-around, all-American athlete, right? Who is a sprinter like you wouldn't believe. But poor Joshua, he is lacking a bit of cranial fortitude. Some would say he's dumb as a box of rocks. So he academically doesn't do very well at all, but he can sprint. Now, here at COHSS University, we are making the one thing that everyone has to accomplish before graduation is going to be the same for everyone. And the rule is equal. Everyone has to sprint across the line 10 seconds after the start. Now, who do you think is going to win? Joshua. Is that fair? Is that fair? No. Is it equal? Yes, it is. Yes, because the rule applies to everyone equally. It's not fair and it's not just. So I submit to you when we say we want everything to be fair, we want it to be fair in our favor. Do we not? Yes. And so does God. God wants it to be fair in our favor as well. It's important that we not paint each other with our tainted broad brush of our concept of what God is like. with our concept of what God is like. Um, now, I'm going to ask four people that I've notified before that I'm going to ask to come up here for just a moment. Athena, Barb, Robert, Kwang. Okay, I'm going to turn my back to you for just a moment. Now, I present to you, now to my back, four of God's special creations, right? Each one uniquely made. Each one a Christian, right? Right? Each one a Christian. Now, let me ask you, is this truly a reflection of God and of his image? Yes, okay. Is this truly a reflection of God and his image? Okay. Now, is this truly a reflection of God and his image? Okay. And is this truly a reflection of God and his image? You mean in each one of these individuals is reflected the image of God? Yes. Okay. Tell me then, what does God look like? You got it. 
Thank you. Thank you. God does not look like any single one of us. No single one of us has a corner on the look like God market. God cannot be contained in these little boxes that we have right here. Nor can God be contained within that cranial cavity that we all possess, whether it is magnificent or poor. He cannot be contained. He is greater, greater even than the sum of all of us put together. That's the greatness of God. He has called each and every single one of his created that's here today for his purpose and his purpose alone. Not for my purpose, not for your purpose, but for his purpose. And what is his purpose in this body What is God about? What is the nature of God? Why are we together? For the purpose of L-O-V-E. Love. God's love. Agape love. Love that is not about self, but love that is self-sacrificing. Love that is giving, and in the giving is the receiving of more of what we've given. We can never give away all of the love because he keeps replenishing it in our hearts, in our minds, and in our souls. Because he is the source of love in our lives, not we, not anything that we can conjure up. How many of us want to be first? Oh, come on. Everybody wants to be first. I know Ray was the first hand that went up back there. (laughs) If you don't believe he wants to be first, engage in a game with him. Yeah. There is only one outcome for him. But that's like all of us in one way or another. We approach it differently. But we still want to come out first. Well, God says we can come out first. But not as we see our first. But as he sees our first. He calls us to be first By giving up ourselves. By giving ourselves to him. And living in the knowledge and the truth of who he is in our lives. That is to his glory and not to ours. To his glory. When he said, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. The life that he wants us to have in abundance is the abundance of life in him. In his abundance. Not in our abundance, but in his abundance. God is no weaker without us, is he? But what makes his body stronger? All of the parts that he's brought together and is calling together to be a part. Each of us uniquely made, uniquely gifted, uniquely given spiritual gifts, uniquely given hearts for service, uniquely given abilities, personalities that are unique, and experiences that no one else, we may have approximations of experiences, but believe me, folks, none of us can have the same experience. 
even with the same incident. Because each of us is interpreting that experience differently based upon all the other things that we are, that he's made us. But he calls us together to create a strong body. He calls us to be spiritual bodybuilders within the body of Christ here that we call Church of the Holy Spirit song. And it's up to us to say, I accept or I reject. I will give up myself for the good of the body or I will maintain myself and weaken the body. Whether we're on first or whether we are the last is the choice that we make. The decision to follow, to give up our will for the sake of the whole, for the sake of the one who's called us here to do that, is ours. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you today with surrendered hearts, surrendered minds to your will. Lord, as we seek not to fulfill ourselves, but to fulfill the call that you have for us as individuals, uniquely gifted and made individuals. May you take each and every one of us here in this diverse community and bring us together as one heart, one spirit, under one Lord, God, Savior, Emmanuel, forever and ever, to your glory, in Jesus' name.